Hey everyone, this is uh, Noakian FF here coming to you with another review. This I have a very interesting shoe for you guys today. I just got these in the mail. These are the Sukaido V O uh, 80 steel toe boots. Now I know what you're thinking. These are some weird boots, but uh, you know what? They're minimalist, so. And they're steel toe boots, and I'm a construction worker, I'm a scaffold builder, so guess what? Um, it was, you know, uh, just a matter of time before I got these these things, you know, for my job. Because I'm going to be honest with you, man, they don't got any good uh, steel toe boots out in the market yet. Um, as far as I know, there's no minimalist or, or, or a minimalist uh, American style steel toe boot uh, apart from, or uh, yeah, just a minimalist boot. Uh, Apart from this shoe uh, that is available in the market. So I just went for these. These are steel toe, like I said. These are made for industrial workers. I'm not sure if they are uh, NIOSH approved. Uh, I do work in the, in the chemical plant. So um, we are required as, as, uh, you know, uh, as, as contractors to wear sh uh, shoes that follow the NIOSH uh, guidelines um, or ANSI. I don't know. If, I, I can't remember which which uh, organization is a part of all that. But uh, we have to, you know, they tell us that we have to have a steel toe boot with a two inch defined heel. Um, I know it's supposed to. Well, I mean, most of the boots like this, uh, these RK sixty six forty five boots here, they are not two inches. I don't know what they mean by a two inch defined heel. I guess they want a, a shoe that is two inches high. Uh, this is about one inch high, so I don't really, can't really see the difference between this and that. They both have a heel, and uh, so I don't, I don't know, guys. Um, I'm gonna, I haven't worn them yet, so I'm gonna see what's up with that. I'm gonna try to wear them, um, and so these, um, you know. Anyway, back. Back to these boots. These are a uh, Jika Tabi style shoe, which is basically, you know, in layman's terms, it is a a, 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 a split toe shoe where the big toe uh, or the first metal tarsal is uh, isolated by itself, while the rest of the toes are uh, with each other um, in, a, in this this a single digit um, per se, but. Um, you know these were are very well made boots. You know the 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 design of a shoe like this is actually, you know, a very anatomical design for you know the human for the human body. This is a shoe that is what I would consider a healthy shoe, especially for those who have bunions like me and need that that big toe to be on its own. You know, um, I was watching a video recently on YouTube about how. Um, and I'll, I'll probably bring a, a, a add a link to that stuff, you know, in a bit. Uh, but uh, once I upload it, uh, but this, according to this doctor, he um, he says that the big toe is actually the most uh, the most important aspect of of the foot. Uh, and uh, according to him, he uh, he says that the big toe actually has its own connection to the brain apart from the other four shoe, uh, four digits of the toes. Uh, and as well as if you look at some um, diagrams of, of the foot, there's a, there's a lot more uh, ligaments and, 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 uh, uh, and tendons and nerves connected to, to the toe uh, as, as opposed to the, the, these are the four other digits of the shoe, of the foot, I'm sorry. And so it's important that this is isolated and acts on its own. So it kind of adds like a, a more functional, you know, design for the, for the human body, you know, it, uh, and also uh, trains the big toe in order to act um, uh, 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 individually uh, away from uh, or independently away from the other toes. So um, with that said, uh, I'm going to go over like the history of the uh, Jikatabi boots. Uh, I have a little, a, a couple notes that I wanted to write down. Now, I, have to, I want to start off by saying that I really respect, uh, you know, the Japanese um, 
basically outlook on 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 the things that they they create man they, those guys are just true artists real, real, real craftsmen real construction work you know workers hard you know designers whatnot they uh they really take pride in their designs and their work and and i, I have to just give props to 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 the things that they make you know uh if if you ever uh, have used japanese products most most people uh out there use Japanese products more than they realize, uh, you know, most people use like a Toyota uh, car vehicle, you know, and uh, people are always talking about how great uh, Toyota is, how reliable they are, as well as how inexpensive they are um, compared to the American vehicles who uh, are, uh, you know, are maybe not as uh, reliable, uh, you know, uh, as, as the Japanese uh, uh, counterparts. And, uh, you know, there was a, a story actually I read the other, uh, I read the other day, um, and, uh, it was, uh, the, the story was talking about, or actually I was at church, right? I go to church. Yeah. Uh, I love, you know, uh, yeah, I love Jesus guys. Just so you know, but, um, uh, the preacher actually, you know, he's a very knowledgeable guy, uh, over in uh, Kingwood Church of Christ, you know, he, uh, was, uh, was, uh, giving out a sermon, I can't quite remember what he was talking about, one thing he was talking about was uh, this joint venture that Toyota had with uh, GMC, you know, and they had like a, a, a joint venture where they were, or GMC asked Toyota to help them out in the, the production process over in, uh, I believe was San Diego, in a plant, it's called the, the Numi plant, it's spelled N-U-M-M-I, you can go ahead and check that out, and uh, apparently, you know, um, Toyota was helping them out and making better vehicles and uh, GMC wasn't doing a, a, that much of a good job. And, uh, the, you know, they created a plant and they were making, you know, Toyotas and uh, GMC vehicles, Chevy vehicles side by side. And, and the Japanese were, you know, in there just fixing everything that was wrong, making the vehicles even better. Unfortunately, they shut down that plant. I don't know if it's still going anymore. I haven't really looked into it that deeply. Uh, I just thought it was an interesting story and just, just kind of showcases how great, you know, Japanese uh, technology or, you know, just, the, the, just the, 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 the craftsmanship of these people are, man. So, I, yeah, like I said, I got to give props to them. Uh, okay, so um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this, these are the Sokaido. Uh, B, uh, B O eighty steel toe boots. Um, um, like I said, I need these uh, for for. Uh, oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm I'm still talking about the his history. Anyway, uh, let's go back to Jikatabi. You know the, the history of that. Uh, like I said, I have some notes here, and apparently it was uh, produced by a man uh, in Japan named Tokojiro Ishibashi, who was the brother of uh, Shajiro Ishibashi, and who founded the Bridgestone uh, Tire Company as, as they were working, uh, I guess, together and creating different rubber products, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it was, it was started early in the, in, the, in the 20th century. And he, uh, basically, the, the shoe was basically designed for, for construction workers, farmers, gardeners, you know, rickshaw pullers, uh, you know, and, and, you know, other peasant workers, you know, and... Uh, so it was it was something that was made basically uh, for 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 laborers. It was a laborer shoe. Um, a lot of people like to say that they were they're ninja shoes, um, and that's not really what they were for. I mean, there's a lot of history, you know. Since then, you know, they were used by soldiers, and I think uh, martial artists uh, since then were actually using them as as uh, maybe as as uh, martial arts shoes because they are very functional. They 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 uh, accommodate the the human design, the human anatomy, you know, and and allow them to function, you know, as a regular minimalist shoe does, but with the added benefit of the individualism of the the big toe, right? So um, uh, apparently, and also I was reading uh, on the history. You can look all this information in Wikipedia. This is basically all all the notes where I got them from. It was um, used in World War Two. Uh, and even before World War II, um, by by you know uh, the soldiers, you know uh, in the Sino-Japanese War, if you guys know about that, uh, it was uh, there was a, a war in 1932 between Japan and, and China. It was uh, kind of leading up to World War II, 
and uh, uh, apparently they were using them. But uh, there's a, a specific uh, campaign that was talked about on Wikipedia. I know this is not, you know, the best uh, resource available, but I mean, there's all kinds of research, and maybe this can this information will help you look into the the shoes the shoes more and look you know look into all the, 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 the resources that are available on the internet, you know, hopefully it's more reputable than Wikipedia. But uh, I, I know Wikipedia likes a, has a, a lower part where it cites all their information, so uh, feel free to do the research on that. Um, um, but uh, it, apparently it was uh, used in, uh, in World War II as well, uh, by, uh, specifically by the Special Naval Landing Forces, or the Tokubetsu Riku Sentai, or, in other words, there were the uh, Japanese Marines uh, of, uh, you know, of Imperial Japan, uh, and they were used uh, mainly in in uh, in, in uh, Australia fighting against the Americans and the Australians. Uh, in, I'm sorry, they were used in New Guinea in the Battle of New Guinea against the Australians and the Americans, and um, uh, uh, from what I hear, that there were, you know, they they have. They have them showcased in a museum in Australia called the um, Australian War Memorial, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've seen the uh, the picture of it. It's, uh, they have like a Japanese guy with a knee mortar, you know, uh, uh, readying the, the mortar with his rifle slung, I believe. And he's wearing the Jikatabi boots and uh, that were, I guess, were issued to him. But I uh, also heard that they, uh, they weren't just used in that campaign. They were also used in like, uh, you know... Um, in, in the battles uh, in Iwo Jima as well, they were found there. I guess um, maybe they were not standard issued, but maybe they were just like special boots that you could get, or maybe they were civilian boots that they took to the front. Who knows? I mean, I'm uh, like I said, I'm not the expert, but um, yeah. So it, I just thought it was really interesting. Also, uh, heard that they ha had to stop wearing those boots because of how like. Um, uh, how 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 unique their design was like you know they said that the Australian soldiers would go out uh, patrolling and they would see uh, boot prints on the ground and say oh these were Japanese soldiers you know these are Japanese Marines you know they're patrolling and they find their base or whatnot so I guess it was not some not a very good tactical decision on their part but you know uh, maybe on uh, for the sol individual soldier using it I imagine he really appreciated having really functional boots like that. Um, recently, they've been used. Uh, they've been uh, made for construction workers for steel with, with steel toe. Some of them were made with a, a resin cap or st uh, a, a steel toe cap. You know, in recent years, I can't remember when they started doing that, but it's maybe in like the '90s or maybe in the 2000s. Not sure, but uh, I know recently they started doing making those these boots for construction workers. So. And I'm, I'm glad that they did that because, you know, um, it's it's hard to find steel toe boots, like I said, that are uh, functional. In fact, I have, I think I showed you, um, sorry, I'm just going back and forth and stuff. Uh, these boots like here, these are actually the widest boots I could find. I was going to make a review for you guys, but I honestly didn't like these boots too much. And uh, apparently these are the widest boots you can find. You can check them out online. These are the uh, Rockport RK 6645s and uh, I've tried a couple of boots. I've tried the T Timberland Pros. Uh, um, I've tried the, uh, uh, the 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 Rocky. Uh, uh, what was it called? Um, there's there's like a, a Rocky boot that claims to have the widest toe box in the in toe box in the industry. But I when I compared it to the shoe, that that, that seemed to be wrong. So. These were uh, wider, and even though these were wider, these were not as are not pretty much uh, uh, wide enough for my foot, man. They were not, you know, even close. I mean, they were pretty decent. They gave a lot of width to the top, but it, I mean, they were still fucking my, my feet up. Excuse my language, but um, yeah, I needed something that was wide, uh, that was a more foot shaped, man, because like my foot, as wide as they are right here, you know. My foot kept sli sliding up, and that's a that's a major problem. And having worn these boots, I feel like that's that's not going to be a problem anymore. If anything, it's going to reverse it because it's got the freaking single digit right there by itself, you know. And so if my foot does slide up, it's not going to push my it's not going to squeeze my my toe off to the side, you know. I feel like I have more much more 
freedom and man maneuverability with these shoes with the limited time that I use them. So I really like uh, I really like how how I feel with these shoes. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, anyway, I'll just go with over the features with you, man. They're they're really really unique, man. I'm not. Um, I'm gonna start off with the toe box, man. I got my Ultra Solstice XTs, man, and you can see, bro. These are even wider than Ultras, man. Uh, albeit, I do have like a, a full size. I think it's a full size bigger. These are a size 30. Um, I, yeah, I think these are like a full, uh, like a, 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 which would be in American uh, uh, ratings would be maybe a size 12. Um, so, yeah, so I got, yeah, these are... Uh, a, a, a lot wider, uh, uh, not wider, but a lot uh, bigger, which is cool. Cause, uh, my my toes go up to like right there, you know. That's where my big toe stops. So there's just more room in the bottom, which is cool. Uh, and they, they 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 do look either way. Even if they weren't, they they're still a lot lighter. I mean, a lot wider. So man, it, you know, the fact that it's wider than.